So I can say Happy New Year again from this time from the Sea of Galilee. Yesterday was from Jerusalem. Some people are flying high this morning. Look at this beautiful sky here at the Sea of Galilee with the wind action it's a little bit murky here right now See the light coming out of the water. Portland, Oregon. Can Canberra. 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 Australia. Alaska. All over. Oh, there's no place like Galilee. Well, there's no place like Jerusalem, and there's no place like your home in Alaska and in Canberra and wherever do we have Singapore, Australia, uh, every place created by the Lord. In most places of the world today in the liturgy are celebrating the Epiphany. better known as the visit of the kings to the baby Jesus. Look at all the green. Look up at Mount Barbell. All that rain producing its effect. Every nation on earth will adore him. That's the big theme. And that's why Abraham was called so that every nation on earth would adore him. And that was the promise of, for the son of David. And this is one of the biggest titles of this baby, born in Bethlehem, the town of David. The son of David, every nation on earth will adore him. So it's not about us, it is, <laughs> but it's about it's, it's theocentric, it's centered on God, but it's also centered on us in the sense that the blessing is for us because adoring the creator of everything, this is where life is at. Not just to enjoy the things here, the beauty, all these creatures, but to know the maker, to be in communion with the maker of all this. What a blessing. To know the maker. Look at the way the growth is coming here. Look at that growth. You know, a farmer is very interested in the growth in the grass. If the ground gets dry, I'll be interested in walking up and mount our bill shortly. I wonder if this is the same guy coming back. Can you see him? But the ground is still quite wet, so that's not very clever to go up on the... Start caking up those boots, adding kilos to the... And pounds of weight of clay and earth. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. That's the song today. That's in every of the, all the readings today. The pagan peoples came. That means the people that weren't the chosen people, that didn't have that gift originally.
sometimes the chosen people have been referred to after Vatican II as our older brothers and sisters. But there's even a more preferred term is the first witnesses of the one true God. And so in his marvelous pedagogy, God chose to prepare a people to receive the gift of salvation for all humanity. In that sense, to serve all humanity. The problem is with servants sometimes, <laughs> like public servants, they become public bosses and public owners. To be a servant, that happens to us also. It happens as such an easy temptation to take possession. It happens to parents. They take possession of their children. And to refer everything back to the Creator, to the Almighty. Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. And there's the unity of the human family restored. Because all the different cultures can have their expression. All the different uh, peoples, all the different ethnic ethnicities, languages. Isn't that marvelous? That we can be one family with such a, an incredible richness, more richness than all the diversity of flowers on Mount Arbel in the Andes, in the Alps, in the Himalayas, in South America, in Alaska, all over the whole world. A new unity, a new level of unity restored in humanity. And yesterday I read for the first time with shock to see that there were 13,000 people already lives lost in the conflict over the Ukraine. I really had no idea that it was that, that wild, that crazy, that horrible, that violent. And yesterday was World Day for Peace to get all the nations of the world understanding each other, that we're not here to dominate each other, that we're here to build each other up, to serve each other. But we don't need to amass armies on borders. We need to build bridges and have education and communication. Lord, all the nations on earth will adore you. When we take ownership and own and possess and develop guns and weapons and nuclear weapons and laser weapons and all kinds of weapons to destroy with the highest technology of the world. <clears throat> Lord, every nation on earth will adore you. How we need to get to that place. And to adore in spirit and in truth. And we can't throw stones just at these big leaders uh, worldwide because our own heart sometimes is quite fickle. Oh, there comes the sun, people. First sunrise here at the Sea of Galilee this morning in the new year. And we have this big liturgical feast of Christmas. And it's not over. Yesterday was the eighth day, but today with the Epiphany is a huge Christmas feast. Now here in the Holy Land, we won't be celebrating the Epiphany today. Isn't that interesting in the, in the Eucharist, in the Mass? And also in the German-speaking part of the world, it won't be celebrated because the traditional date is kept the 6th of January, the 12th day of Christmas. Wow, 12 days of Christmas, wow. So on Thursday will be the day of the Epiphany, here liturgically. But since most of you are celebrating the Epiphany today, I decided I will go with these readings today for the sunrise stroll and chat. This is not a liturgical event, this is a stroll and chat. And you are on your side of the deal, you're having the Epiphany, so let's stroll and chat about the Epiphany. The Epiphany, that's a beautiful concept to uh, a discovery or a, a revelation, uh, uh, a, a self-giving, uh, an opening up, a revealing light. People say, I had an Epiphany, you know, it's like... I really got to understand something very significant and major in my life, an epiphany.
And there come the kings and they discover the child and they bring their gifts. You know about incense, uh, on our little time together as a community, we were down in the Negev, I told you that last week, right? And the Negev was the incense trail, it was, sorry, the Negev was not the incense trail. The incense trail ran through the Negev from, uh, from where the Emirates are today uh, across to Gaza and then the Roman power came in and tried to divert that trade and there was a war and they took over from the they, they diverted the trade from the what's the name of the people the Nabataeans and so you know the camels were trekking I think it was 32 kil miles 32 kilometers a, a day and so all the stations, there were like rest areas, if you will, along the route for to take care of all the needs of the people, water, food, a place of rest for the people involved. And, and so that's just, you know, not, not a week south of Jerusalem by camel, maybe three days, four days. So that's interesting, south of Bethlehem. So the plausibility of people from the east and very wealthy people they camels they say that the incense was worth gold they in its weight in gold so they they were very wealthy we could see that with the beautiful uh, remnants in the archaeology they had extraordinary wealth no wonder the romans went after them and wanted to take that trade <clears throat> so this is a crossroads always, the Via Maris connecting Africa, Asia, and Europe. So this is a great strategic place to be for setting up the revelation for all the nations. Lord, every nation on earth will adore him. <clears throat> And then if you want to see something special in this regard as well, on Friday evening last, I did the German evening stroll I do each Friday evening <clears throat> in Jerusalem. It's in German, okay, but all the pictures are in English. And you can see that video, it's there on YouTube and there's a link in my profile in Facebook. And it's not on the, my Facebook page. I just put it, I posted it on the profile. Just it, it's always there for the German speakers, and you can see Herod's palace, the rem, remnants of it at the Jaffa Gate. So I did the the stroll with that very much in mind uh, for the for the Germans, and even though the the uh, readings were the days readings of the mass because. Um, of the second Sunday of of uh, Christmas in Germany, the feast of the Epiphany is is very big because they have these they call them the Sternsinger, and they are children that go and sing for charity all around the world. That's a beautiful expression of every nation on earth will adore you. What are you going to do today for the nations? For your nation and for other nations so many nations in deep trouble we mentioned the ukraine but right here across from us syria and lebanon is in deep trouble nobody's talking about it anymore deep deep trouble lebanon is up behind the mountains there in the distance lord every nation on earth will adore you so at least we can reach all of these places by prayer we can actually see jordan right now as well look down between these two trees and you can see on the left the end of the Golan there. Let's go back to the sun here. So let's, there you have the Golan then. Uh, there's that little piece of land sticking out from under Tiberius, the trees. And behind that, maybe you can make out very faintly a line, more or less the same height as the Golan, that's Jordan. There's a big valley there where the bird is flying. There's a valley going along there and the, and we're looking at Jordan and all of these countries have very, very big issues. And here as well, uh, in Israel, Palestinians. And then we have all the issues with the migrants all over the world, in Europe, in the Mediterranean. 
Pope Francis said a very strong word when he was in Greece and Cyprus, you know. And uh, there's a famous old word the Romans called the Mediterranean Mare Nostrum, our sea, because they had the empire was all around the Mediterranean. And Pope Francis said, let's not become called Mare Mortum, Mare Nostrum, Mare Mortum, the, the sea of the dead because of all of the refugees uh, losing their lives there all the migrants. So, Lord, may all the nations on earth adore you. What are we going to do for the nations today? So I encourage you at least to pray. And that'd be a great deed. No prayer is ever wasted. To pray seriously for them. To pray seriously for the migrants, for the people in the different countries, for the people in countries at war. Many silent wars. Uh, people are not talking about them. Great injustices, human trafficking from country to country. So much blood spilt. So let us take responsibility for the nations today. Let us pray for them and let us do what we can. Maybe we know people in other countries, people that are hurting. Maybe we can send a note, a word of encouragement. And we're connected by this means here. So just by sharing also these messages, uh, we're building this network of all the nations together, meeting and building community. And every good deed helps towards peace. People, we'll leave it like that for today. Starting off the new year here in Galilee. Looking forward to this, all the blessings that will be. God bless you. See you later, alligators.